prepping for my first Murano shoot this evening. It's going to be a two camera show, FX9 as the second camera, and we'll be running two Electrosonics wireless labs. This is kind of project I don't do. It's a favor for a friend. They live just down the street, but his parents are renewing their wedding vows. So, you know, it's like a 30 minute ceremony. Then I'll get a little B-roll, come home, cut it together. So I viewed it. I would have shot this just FX3, uh, probably on the gimbal and then FX9 at the back to shoot on sticks. Then I thought, hey, this is a great opportunity. I have one more day with the loaner cam from Sony. So great opportunity for me to try out handheld IBIS, available light in a backyard, uh, the ultimate documentary test or news gathering. I'm going to remove the PL mount and put on a second 28 to 135. So both cameras will be configured that way. I'm going to shoot 1080 on both cameras. I'll probably just shoot cine tone and that means this camera will have to be in super 35 windowed, which means I'm not going to be that wide 28 to 135. My other option from my arsenal of lenses back here is I have a PL 15 to 47. Hmm. Maybe I'll shoot that one. Maybe I'll throw that on right now. Let's see how it feels handheld. All right. Uh, it's not light, but it's not terrible. I've got my bridge plate digging into my shoulder. So I'll remove that. I've got the IBIS on set to 45 mil and um, I'm not going to be able to change that as I shoot, but it feels okay. Even at 17 mil, since this lens doesn't communicate with the camera, there's no pin contacts on it. Uh, but this is, I bought this lens years ago for shooting handheld dock on the Amira because it's nice and wide, but I can still get 15.5 mil and then 47. So 28 to 135, still in super 35 window. Of course I get the autofocus, but I lose a stop. It's an F4, quite a bit lighter. Certainly be able to shoot a lot longer without getting tired. So the one thing I can't, I mean, I guess the other advantage to this lens in E-mount is the IBIS adjusts based on focal length automatically plus autofocus. Only an F4, but I could shoot in the high base ISO. The PL mount for the Burano, and it is a proper mount versus an adapter. You can see here, it's got a dedicated mating surface. It's a larger diameter at the E-mount seats inside it. And then there's this deeper channel for the locking ring on the E-mount. So I was happy to see that it's a proper lens mount in that uh, that's a much larger mating surface. So for heavier PL lenses, I can get away with uh, that compact zoom I was just shooting weighs about the same as my old red primes, the wider ones, 18, 24, and 35, weigh about six pounds. That zoom I just had up, as I recall, is about six pounds. I'm confident as long as I'm gentle running those lenses without a support rods. And I don't honestly have a base for this demo camera at the proper height to put iris rods in place. One additional observation on this PL mount is there is a 16 by 9 hard mat cut out at the rear that extends, looks like it goes inside the E-mount a bit. This should be uh, a good thing in controlling ghosting and flare issues. I have some inexpensive E to PL adapters I've been running on my FX9s and I've noticed some of my lenses, not all, the red primes, the, the longer ones like the 50, 85 and 100 which have a much larger image circle, they tend to be really sensitive to like milking out if there's a window in the background on the edge of frame or even if it's in frame for say an interview and that's just the quality of that adapter versus something like this. When Sony sent this camera to me, I wasn't sure if it was going to have batteries and I don't have a V-mount adapter. I'm all gold mount. So I ordered a shape because it was just affordable. I think it was a little over hundred dollars shape V-mount adapter. Uh, second reason, and I, I didn't realize this, but the Sony batteries in the factory plate, there are no DTAP ports on the battery or the camera. And unfortunately the shape adapter, I didn't notice it when I purchased it. It only has one port, but that's all I need for my little demo jobs. I was looking, wooden camera has a nice lower profile adapter and I'm sure they'll make one specific for the Burano. 
in the like $400 price tier. The compromise on the shape adapter is it lands the battery and the adapter above the top surface of the camera where I think that wooden camera plate will keep the gold battery in line with the V-mount versus above. My plan was to use this DTAP port to power my OC monitor and connect it via HDMI to have menu overlays in all the modes I need. And then I discovered this DTAP port interferes with the HDMI port on the camera. Temporary solution will be to power accessories off the P-tap that's on top of the battery. And in the future, I'll buy a purpose designed gold adapter for the Murano. All right, I'm back to the PL mount. I decided it's more important for me to be able to get wide shots of all of the guests, 40 people seated. I'm not gonna be able to get that in one shot at 28 mil Super 35. So 15 to 47 for the win, we're shooting 1080 and I'll just suffer with the extra weight. Got both cameras set to 1080, 2398 in Cinetone. For the FX9, I set the video codec to the MPEG-2 422 because it's easy to edit and I want small files. The Burano doesn't have that codec available, so I'm going to shoot AVCI. I don't want to do long gop. It's too laggy on the timeline. Just a quick observation here. I got one of my 98 watt hour hypercores running the Burano. See, I've had it on for a bit, and it's telling me I got three hours remaining. So it appears when you're in Super 35 mode and possibly 1080, there is not as much power consumption as full frame 8K. Actually, yeah, let's switch over. Okay, now we're in full frame 8K XAVC HQ. It looks like it's pulling a little bit more wattage, but not significant. Like it hasn't been four or five minutes. Switched over to Cine mode. 16 by 9 full frame 8K in the OCN LT codec. And yeah, we lost like a third of the battery capacity. So, hey, for me, that's good to know. I get uh, one third less wattage when in the a XABC codec, which will be all of the jobs I shoot. I don't anticipate any of my client base wanting to shoot XOCN, at least not for the next 12, 24 months. Burano fits nicely in the Porter Brace bag. So lots of extra space in there. All kitted out, lens installed, battery installed, shotgun mic, card formatted. We should be good. We'll get through this whole evening with the one battery. And then the FX9 lives on my cart. I'll cover it up before we drive off. All right, so we are going to set up right in front of this tree. And then you probably want to go maximum height on that thing. Go get a sandbag out of the truck for the spreader before we put the camera on there. It'll be easier to level with some weight on there once the camera's up. Try putting your arm over the tripod handle in the back to rest your armpit. It's a little more comfortable. There you go. And then you can adjust the height of obviously both handles. Even with the heavy lens out front being out of balance, no accessories on the camera, it's quite pleasant to shoot on. I ended up shooting the entire evening, ceremony, everything, handheld. I should have placed a tripod up on the stage. If I shot weddings and events, it would have occurred to me before it was too late. The other place where I blew it is behind the altar is right where the sun set. I actually looked at sun, the SunPath app on my phone and saw, oh, by the time the ceremony starts, the sun will be behind the roof line of the, the neighboring house. And I had the timing wrong. And right at the kickoff of the ceremony, the sun was flaring my son's camera position. And you know, he's still learning. This was a favor for a friend, so it's perfect learning opportunity. Uh, he needed an eyebrow, and I have an eyebrow, Mapbox eyebrow, sitting in the van, which was parked out front. Just realized it too late, and I was too busy shooting the alt angle. So the result of that was we didn't use much of the tripod shot. Most of the coverage is my handheld camera, and I intended to be the inverse of that. But hey, that's how it goes. Gives me a newfound respect for the people that shoot weddings as a business. Man, one take to get it right with stressed out clients on a fixed schedule, no take two. Gives me a refreshed appreciation of corporate and commercial work where often I have a take two, take five, take nine. All right, I think I clocked about an hour with the camera on my shoulder. Good evening. 
All the weights out front with this compact PL zoom. I think the center of gravity's here. So I'm thinking next time I will 180 this handle. So it's out here coming off on my shoulder. Things are nice and balanced in my hand. Next day, this is a real job I'm working for an agency. The end client is a major corporation. It's a charity event. They're one of the sponsors. So ends up actually just being more event videography type of assignment. It's a 60 second package, but this location I'm covering is only 10 seconds of the 60 second project. So I had a little punch list of things to get and specific instructions to get good shots, but do not overshoot. E-mount, Sigma, Art, 85 mil. Thought I'd play with autofocus, 2398 project rate shooting 60 FPS slow and quick really wanted to test out moving shots on my shoulder with the IBIS enabled with AF and a high speed well, out here shooting dock style b-roll lifestyle shots have my first oopsie discovery the handle when you index it up to set the camera on a flat surface like on your cart or say on the ground it can keep going to the point where it crashes into the little audio module so there's a very faint ding in there i'm sorry sony my bad but now i know but when it's on my shoulder and i'm flipping it up i don't necessarily know where the stopping point is so obviously i can go all the way until it hits client specs on this one was uhd deliverable in s-log 2398 project rate but shoot 60 fps high speed it's like lifestyle beauty shots of people, employees in this organization. And then I also had to get a couple of wide shots on the gimbal. So we built up the FX3 with the same record specs, full frame UHD, S-Log, S-Gamut. And I think I shot a grand total of three gimbal shots and felt like I got it. All in short day, we shot a total of 50 gigs, which was probably too much. Uploaded it on my home Wi-Fi to the editor. He was happy and these clients are, um, in-house, they're a Canon operation, so they were a little apprehensive to shoot Sony, but I got a nice note back. The footage from Saturday was spot on, thank you. As soon as we publish, I'll send you a link, well done. In a world of no news is good news, it's always nice to get some positive feedback. This project was booked as an FX9 shoot, but then they wanted a few gimbal shots, so that's why the FX3 was in play, and swapping out the nine for the Burano was seamless. And on my shoulder, it feels like a little bit lighter weight camera and the battery lasts longer. I got through the whole assignment on the one battery and I stayed on the 85 mil all day as well. XAVCI codec in both cameras or whatever the equivalent is in the FX3. I'm not sure if it's different, but I used the, uh, the best codec available on that camera. I moved my FX9 mic and mount over to the Burano and then realized it was all high speed. So it didn't record any audio, but that's a good fit. I th think when I buy the Burano, I need to find an FX9 mount to add to the, the rod. Met another photographer covering the story for a different corporate client, FX6, 28135. Looks like a, maybe a Zacuto shoulder, VCT shoulder pad and the grip. We swapped cameras. I let him try out the Burano. He was super excited to see it first time in the field. And it was nice to see the two cameras side by side. I mean, you know, the Burano is a little bit bigger in every dimension, but with the FX6 kitted out versus just the lightweight mode I have here on the Burano, the weights were very similar. I would say that FX6 rig was slightly heavier and because of the zoom, slightly longer. Well, I don't have permission to show any of the footage. Maybe once things are live, I can show them off. But as anyone watching this knows, there's loads of high quality demos out there of what this camera is capable of from an image standpoint. I was more interested in the mechanics of it, having it on my shoulder, integrating it into some of my smaller projects like these. And then I'm very happy that the color science is close enough to my FX3 and FX9s that on my multicam jobs, I'll have no problem cycling the Burano in as an additional camera. And I'm very confident this is going to be my go-to A camera on everything, sort of irrespective of scale or budget, because at this stage in my career, and this is, this is kind of the, the switch flipped for me when I bought my first Amira in 2014. That was the point where I'm like, you know what? I got arthritis. My spine is a little crooked. I got back problems, ailments from a career of slinging big, heavy broadcast cameras on my shoulder. And 
around 2014 was the time I said, you know what, if I got to use higher end kit beyond my client's budgets, but it yields less pain and wear and tear on my body and I get better quality for less effort, I'm to this point in my career where that's the direction I'm moving. Like I, I, I'm happy with the rates I get with my clients. I stay just as busy as I want to be. And so at this stage, I can afford it. It's not about my clients necessarily being able to afford it. For me, it's package rate, putting days in the calendar. So this wraps up a week for me working with this camera. And yeah, it looks to me like this is going to be my primary tool for the next couple of years. I mean, longer battery run times than my FX9s in the record formats I commonly shoot. It's lighter weight, it's smaller. IBIS, variable ND, native E mount, AF, PL mount. The image matches my other FX cameras, but also is a little bit more premium. It's more forgiving on faces. I do still prefer the out of the box look of my Amira, but Optimum image quality is just one piece of the bigger puzzle of being a service provider for clients. And majority of my work last four years has been Sony centric. And I feel it continuing in that direction going forward. You know, I'm looking at a camera that's one quarter the cost of the Alexa 35 with features I've grown to love. IBIS, variable ND, autofocus, long battery run times, smaller video file sizes and codec options. All right, we'll wrap this up here. I think my next will be in Mexico. I'm on hold. I don't know, it's dicey, 50-50. I'm gonna find out on Monday whether or not I'm getting on a plane like Tuesday. See you next week.